Anyone experienced with this? <laughs> Sorry. And hmm, hmm, okay. This is not exactly what I wanted to have, but it will do. Okay, 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 this will do, this will do. Uh, okay, uh, sorry about this. Uh, I am Ladia Tong, I work for Red Hat, and in my free time I was always interested in uh, everything related to programming languages, which is why I was speaking about the Dart uh, last year, and which is why I'm speaking about Kotlin today. Uh, so I'm glad you decided to join me on this quest for the holy grail of Java programming. Uh, I'm going to speak about first uh, some uh, JVM programming languages, and then I'll speak a little bit about Kotlin, because I think it's worth it. So first of all, what the hell is Java next? I mean, uh, almost everyone probably has a certain idea about what Java next means, but I'm going to use it, so I uh, should probably explain what do I uh, think Java Next is. It's a language that could uh, supplant Java, but uh, for that it needs to follow uh, certain design principles. For example, uh, it should be easily accessible for, for uh, you know, plain old developer. You know, you shouldn't have to have a PhD in type theory to understand the new language. Uh, it should be explicit, it should be uh, statically typed, uh, and all that just like, just like uh, Java. So let's take a look at some candidates. JRuby, Jiten, Groovy, anyone? Okay, uh, I don't really think so. Uh, not for Java next time. I mean, those are nice languages, but uh, dynamically typed uh, successor to Java? I don't think so. Closure is the same same candidate. Also, it's a dialect of Lisp, so not really a viable uh, Java, uh, Java uh, successor. Anyone knows this one, these languages? Not really. Okay. Definitely recommend it to take a look. Uh, uh, Gosu and Phantom both has a pretty interesting aspects of their type system. Mira, it's uh, it's like it's Java with Ruby syntax. Uh, from all the languages I mentioned here, it's the only one that doesn't have any, uh, any library on its own. It just depends on Java. It's just the language, pure language, which is also an uh, interesting uh, aspect. Let's move on. This uh, already starts to be a viable candidate, Scala. Anyone uh, programming in Scala? Okay, uh, I don't really think that Scala should supplant Java uh, uh, also. Uh, as I said, uh, I believe that no one really should have a, a PhD in type theory to understand the programming language. That's, of course, an exaggeration, but uh, uh, Scala has certain aspects that are pretty complex and not easily accessible to, to uh, a lot of people, me included. Um, if you are happy with Scala, uh, that's cool for you. I'm not. Uh, uh, some reasons for that include uh, the complex type system, mostly, and using of implicits, which is a uh, cool feature. It's very powerful. It also is easily overused, leading to a very, very badly maintainable code, I believe. Salon is a Red Hat project which means that I should be probably promoting that, but I'm not. Uh, the reason is very simple. Salon doesn't try to be a Java next language. 
it tries to be a, a whole new platform, which is a noble goal, uh, but I don't really think that this is what we are looking for. Um, but if you are, if you are happy with a new platform, then you can try Salon. Also, uh, to the same category falls Scala, which are now uh, building their own uh, type safe stack, they call it, a uh, completely new platform. Also, Phantom is a completely new platform. Extend, and has anyone heard of Extend? It's a project of, oh, cool, awesome. Project of uh, Eclipse Foundation. Um, I didn't quite see a lot of interest uh, everywhere. I mean, uh, it's probably a pretty cool language. It has some nice features, but uh, you know, almost no one uh, has, sh has shown an interest. I mean, I didn't see it. I think it just is a, is a project of few people that are passionate about it, which is awesome, but, but they are trying to, you know, move it, uh, move it somewhere. Uh, that might be, of course, wrong, but uh, that's what I saw. Kotlin is what I'm gonna speak about uh, today, and I believe that it's a, it's a pretty good candidate for, uh, for a Java next language, except of Java 8, you know. There comes, uh, there comes uh, these features like, you know, lambdas, default methods. Uh, they really make Java a, a hell of a lot better language, which is cool. It also makes it a lot harder for the Java next languages to become widespread. Uh, however, I still think that Kotlin is uh, worth a look. So Kotlin is a language uh, designed, developed uh, by JetBrains. JetBrains is a company doing these IDEs and developer tools. I mean, if you are not using IntelliJ IDEA for your Java development, then you should. And, uh, yep. And they have all kinds of IDEs, like IntelliJ IDEA for Java, uh, and then, then Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript, uh, whatever. And they are uh, Scala, Groovy, uh, and, and so on, so on, so on. And they are all writing it in Java. Well, there are some parts of the Scala plugin uh, is writ are written in, in Scala, but it's mostly Java. Uh, Java, uh, as you can see, it's most of it, well, uh, uh, a lot of it is, is open source under the Apache license. Uh, it's mostly Java and they are sick of it. Because you know, uh, it's an old language, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of expressive power. Uh, for IDEs, they would certainly use a, a more modern language, which is why they decided to develop their own. And they already have some, some features of their IDEs written in Kotlin. So, if you wanna know, uh, a little bit more about Kotlin, go to kotlinjetbrains.org. If you decide you want to try it, you can go to kotlindemo.jetbrains.com uh, and, and uh, this is when I will start to convince you that it's worth it, that you could you know, install it. Okay, so. I've got some code on slides. Uh, because whatever, what if something happens with the laptop? It, it already happened, but I'll try to I'll try to uh, show that uh, without without looking on on the laptop. Uh, okay, first of all, something really horrible. What's this? It's a hello world in Java. Uh, for me, it's a really horrible code. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, you know the useful stuff. It's like a half of the code, maybe less. The rest is, is useless. It, it's not worth it. it I mean, there's a, there's a lot, of, lot of stuff that just don't make any sense. Like, you know, why have to have a main function in a class? Okay. This is a hello world in Kotlin. Uh, and it shows some, some uh, 
you know, high-level aspects of, of the language. So first of all, we've got top-level functions that don't belong to a class. That's like the main function. We've got types uh, in the postfix position, like in Scala or in Pascal, uh, if you remember. We don't have uh, mandatory semicolons, which appear to be a very important thing for certain people. Don't know why, but, but it looks like that. Uh, uh, on the other hand, these kind of people also hate uh, braces, so uh, we're not going to please everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, hello world. It's pretty simple. So let's take a look at something more interesting. Here's again a little bit of horrible code. What it is? It's an immutable class, has two attributes, and uh, a whole lot of code that doesn't do anything. I mean, you've got these uh, variables, constructor, getters. It's, a, it's a, just how usual Java code looks, uh, but I believe it wouldn't have to look like this. So let's take a look at, at Kotlin. I'm going from non-idiomatic Kotlin. No one should write Kotlin like this to idiomatic one. Uh, uh, the reason is that uh, this is most close uh, Kotlin code to Java, to that Java code that, uh, that I showed. So, uh, what it shows that uh, classes in Kotlin only have one constructor. Its parameters are written uh, uh, directly by, uh, by the, the class name. It has these, these fields. Uh, and this is a class initializer or uh, instance initializer, you can uh, have that in Java too, but uh, again, this is not how Kotlin code should look like. Is it this? Uh, it's a lot better. You can uh, assign the uh, values directly, but again, it's not particularly idiomatic. This is a lot better. Oh, it's not, you can't see it at all. Okay. So this is how class in Kotlin looks like. Uh, and it's, it's uh, the same as the original Java class. So it's immutable. It's final. Uh, I mean, there's no final word here. That's because classes in Kotlin are final by default. It's a, it's a good practice, and Kotlin encourages that. Uh, the fields and the properties are final, too. It's because it uh, uses the same syntax as, as Scala. Val is, is final. Var is not final. And I said it's the same as in Java. I mean, there, there are these, these getters in Java. Why aren't they, uh, why aren't they here? Well, they are generated automatically. Kotlin doesn't have fields. It only has properties, which means that from the Java point, you can, you can uh, call this class instantiate this class from Java and, and use it. And from the Java point, you will have get name and get age generated automatically. Uh, what do you think this main function prints? Okay, it's going to print the same as in Java. Uh, it's going to print person at an identity hash code. Um, not really what we would like. So there's this other thing public data class. Data is an annotation, which means uh, that compiler will generate some stuff for you. Okay. It will generate a two string method, so this will actually print what we want. Uh, it will also generate a bunch of other things. So, you've got equals, you've got hash code, uh, you've got this this two string, you've got copy, uh, uh, which can uh, copy, which you can create a new instance of the immutable class. But you don't have to you don't have to set all the all the uh, all the values because uh, if you don't if you don't Kotlin will copy the 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 old ones, uh, meaning. Uh, we've got variables with default values. And if you don't, uh, if you don't set uh, a name, uh, if you 
uh, and set an age, and you will copy the name because it will, will have the, the default value. Uh, we also have this, as you might see, these component methods. Uh, what are they? Okay. They are convention methods to enable multi-assignments. So if you've got component one, two, three, you can multi-assign uh, like this. Name will get assigned to component one, age will get assigned to component two, which is pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at one more. Here's a mutable class. Uh, I believe they call it Java Bean. Um, okay, uh, I don't like this. It's, it's horrible. It's like 20 age of code for nothing. So we've got this. This class that, that does the same. Uh, it's open, meaning it can be subclassed. You can inherit from it. And it's got name, age, getters, and setters. Uh, everything, uh, just like just like this this uh, Java class. Okay. Um, any questions here? Yes. Uh, data is an annotation which instructs compiler to generate two string hash code copy. Uh, Etc. Component one, two. Okay. Um, by the yeah. Uh, okay, I'm uh, I'm reminded to repeat the questions. Uh, how do you recognize between keyword and annotation? Um, the IDE doesn't make it particularly easy because it shows some annotations in. In this, what what color is it? Yellow, yellowish color. Some annotations in blue. Public is also an annotation. Uh, basically, there are some built-in annotations that are shown in in blue. Um, most uh, most annotations, however, are 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 uh, are set in this in this color. Uh, the convention is uh, to to. Uh, name the annotations with uh, lowercase first letter, so that it looks like a keyword, basically. Uh, if, for example, if you are writing a JUnit test, you annotate a method with an annotation test. And it's common in Kotlin to import this annotation w uh, and rename it during the import to test with a, with a lower, lower uh, first letter. So that, and, and then you write test fun, and it looks like a keyword, but it's an annotation. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a design decision uh, to kind of blur the distinction between keywords and annotations. Does that answer the question? Sort of. Okay, thank you. Yeah? Uh, you have said Kotlin generates a lot of stuff for me, like two string and mm -hmm. uh, If I don't like the default, I, I may override. Yes, yes. Or you can skip the data annotation and just generate it yourself. If you wish, but it's, you know, if if this is gonna work, it should. Then uh, you will know that that the two string method uh, looks like a lot like uh, a generated two string from from IntelliJ IDEA for Java. Is this gonna work? Maybe not. Oh, this is gonna work. Yeah, this is not. This is not not. Uh, not big enough, but uh, anyway, if you want to override it, uh, you have to write write the override keyword. What the hell is going on here? Um, come on, yes, doesn't know, 
and that is an overwrite because it generates, it's not inherited. Is this gonna work or not? Yes, yes, basically. Uh, you can write to string function like this, and if you, if you have that, uh, the compiler won't generate it. Yes. Any other questions at this time? Okay, let's move on to traits. Traits are a little bit like interfaces in Java, except that they can have code. So it kinda looks like multiple inheritance, right? Okay, so let's speak a little bit about multiple inheritance. There's a lot of kinds of multiple inheritance. You know, you can't just say multiple inheritance is evil anymore. Uh, so you can have a single inheritance with interfaces, like in Java before version seven, or C sharp. You can have stateless traits, which basically means interfaces that can have uh, method implementations. They can have code in methods, just like Kotlin or Salon or Java 8, Java since version 8. Uh, they didn't mean it like, uh, like adding traits. They just wanted to enhance uh, interface uh, evolution. But it basically has a semantics of stateless traits. Uh, you can have stateful traits, where you can have state, which is, uh, I, I searched for a language that does that. Uh, and I believe it's done in PHP since version 5.4. You can have mixins, which you have in Scala. Uh, the difference between traits and mixins is that if you have multiple implementations of the same method coming from few for from from uh, more traits, and with traits you have to resolve resolve it yourself. With mixins, it's uh, going to be resolved. Uh, automatically based on the order of, of application of, of make sense. Then you can have full multiple inheritance like C++, which indeed is evil. But we don't have that with Kotlin, obviously. So yeah, this is like, this is an abstract function. This is a function that's implemented. This is a function which is also implemented with a little bit of syntax sugar. If you have a function which uh, only consists of a statement, return something, return expression, you can write it like this. A little bit of syntax sugar, which is pretty uh, nice sometimes. And this is how it looks like. It's class uh, um, inherits from, these, or from all these traits. You uh, have to implement the foo function, which wasn't implemented in the foo trait. And you can call them um, basically just like that. I don't think that we have to uh, deal, dive into it more. Uh, which is a lot more interesting with Kotlin is the treatment of nullability. I mean, uh, null pointer exception is probably the, the most common uh, issue you create and you have to deal with. Uh, Kotlin deals with it on the level of type system. So when I said to you that these, these classes person and from Kotlin and from Java are, are identical, I was lying a little bit because um, these, these, uh, these name and age fields can be, oh well, in, in can't. This name field can be null. Be, but uh, in this case, the name field can't be null because it's not a nullable string. It's a string. If it could be null, it would have to look like this. String question mark. That's a nullable string. You can have null in that, and you can't have null in this. And this is a, a funny way of demonstrating this stuff. The, the answer uh, variable is of type int question mark. Uh, if you ask what the jet thing is, it's an old name for Kotlin, which remains there uh, for, from historical reasons. It will be, it will be gone uh, before 1.0. Uh, so this is, not, uh, this is nullable. Uh, so what do you do? You check if it's not null. Uh, and in this case, it can be used like a non-nullable. Uh, it will be automatically cast 
to, to the non-null variant of the type. Uh, you can also, oh, you also have these, these uh, funny operators. Uh, you can uh, call, call a, uh, a function on a nullable type, but you can do it like this because it might throw a null pointer exception. You can do this, which means that if it's not null, it will be called. If it's not null, then the result of the expression is null. Uh, it's it's uh, taken from Groovy. If you know Groovy, it's the same. Uh, the same with the Elvis operator. It means uh, if answer is not null, the, uh, then the value of the expression is answer. Uh, if it's null, it's 42. Yeah. Uh, this is cool, but uh, I have said, and I should stress it more, uh, Kotlin it takes uh, Java interoperability uh, very seriously. What, that is, what does uh, that mean in the case of nullability? If you call, call a Java class from Kotlin and call a method, uh, how do you know if it's nullable or not? Well, Kotlin says, well, we can't know. So we say it's always nullable. That's not very practical, obviously. So you can annotate Java classes and methods by not null annotations. But again, that's, uh, and, and Kotlin will, will respect that. Again, that's not very practical. Uh, so what Kotlin team did is they annotated the entire JDK, the entire standard library. They also annotated the entire standard library of Android because Kotlin runs on Android just fine. Uh, and they have this tool called K annotator, which will infer these uh, nullability annotations for you. Uh, and you can run it um, from, the, from here, annotate jar files. I don't have any uh, in here to, to demonstrate. But they will infer the nullability annotations for you. Uh, and store them and use them. Um, and it looks like we have 10 minutes more. And I've got a lot of stuff to show, which is a bad, bad thing. OK. Let's take a very short look at collections. They did a, uh, this thing. Uh, well, collections are pretty important. And Kotlin didn't want to invent their own collections library because that's inherently not compatible with Java collections. You would have to go through a lot of hoops to get there. So they use standard Java collections, like you know, this array list of function uh, returns Java util array list. But they wanted to uh, enhance it, because the old Java collections are not very friendly. So they took a very pragmatic approach. Uh, they added some interfaces, like collection, mutable collection, list, mutable list, set, mutable list, mutable, mutable set, uh, and the like. They added them to, this, to their own standard library, which is pretty small. And they made the compiler recognize that the Java classes implement these Kotlin interfaces. It's a hell, a hell of a hack, I think. It's also very practical, you know, uh, because uh, in Kotlin, you can actually pass uh, A, which is a collection of int, to a function that expects a collection of numbers. I mean, collection of ints is actually a collection of numbers in Kotlin, which is not in Java. Uh, however, for mutable collections, you can't do that. You know, various co covariance, contravariance stuff, if you want to hear about that, uh, that would, would be for Entire, entire talk. So uh, they did this, this collections thing because it's all very important. Generics, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, they use, use uh, declaration side variants mostly. But if you need, uh, you can do use side variants. The most important thing about generics in Kotlin is that they are erased, they are not reified. They used to be, but it has a measurable performance impact. So they are erased just like in Java, meaning you don't know at runtime what T is. 
extensions is a very important thing in Kotlin, meaning you can add a, a, a method to a type, sort of. Uh, um, it's like in C Sharp, they've got the same. If you declare a function pirate style, which extends the type string so that everywhere you've got string and you've got this function visible, you can call pirate style on, on a string. But in fact, it's a static method, a static, a static function that is passed the, this thing here as an argument. It's a very, uh huh? Yep. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a external, it's a static function. It's, you know, it's not really added to the class. It lives elsewhere, but, and, and, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this style shows that, uh, this, this italic font shows that it's actually a static, a static method, a static function, that, and only, it's, uh, it's only resolved on, on the syntax level. So, no, you can't, uh, and I didn't repeat the question also. Yeah, uh, lambdas, everyone knows uh, that a modern language should have those. So this is how, how these canonical uh, collections work, look in Kotlin. You create an array list, filter, flat map, take while, uh, you know this, and if you don't, you will know this, know this from Java 8. Except that in Kotlin it looks uh, uh, a little bit nicer and works in Java 6. You can run this on Java 6 uh, VM. Okay, this is how, uh, how you can pass a function. This is a function of type uh, no parameters to T. Uh, yeah, whatever. You can also declare kind of control structures with this. Because uh, you declare a locked function and use it, use it like this or like this which is an extension method, again. Extensions are everywhere in Kotlin. And, and it's pretty interesting. Delegations, delegation is supported in language by Kotlin. Uh, this means that my list implements or exposes the list trait, but it does that by the means of the list variable. So, I mean, it, uh, you don't have to, you know, uh, implement all these list uh, methods in the body of, of the class. You just uh, delegate to a variable. Any questions? Can you also that the, that the lambda are in condition T6? How is its performance compared to the lambda with T6? No idea. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but there's a little bit more interesting thing. You can also delegate properties. You know, uh, in here you have a, a class with a value uh, uh, property, which is a string, and it's computed lazily, meaning that the lazy thing is a delegate for the property, and and it it does that uh, from for the first time it invokes the function, which is which is uh, passed to it. This is a syntax sugar for if the last parameter is a function, you can write it like this. Uh, and and uh, uh, every other invocation just uh, tooks, takes, uh, takes the already computed value. And uh, you can write, your, write your, own, your own delegates for properties. That's pretty pretty interesting thing. Uh, and builders, this is a... This is a pretty uh, complicated topic which would require like at least five or ten minutes to explain, so I'll just show you what you can do. Uh, this is a very, very naive example. It shows how you can build a data structure. Uh, and the more, more, most important thing is that you, can, you just can have any, any code in here because they are just, just uh, uh, extension, uh, extension lambdas invoking some other lambdas. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a little bit complicated and, uh, and I don't really think we have time for, 
for explaining that, even though I'd love to explain it. It's really interesting, it's really cool. It has a very little overhead for, uh, for uh, this, this kind of thing. So we've got very little time, so questions, please. Yes, it's very much similar to Builders in Groovy. It's inspired by them, obviously. It's, it's fairly obvious that this is the inspiration, but they are statically typed checked. So uh, there are actually people who wrote an HTML uh, builder for this in Kotlin, and they are using it in a web framework. So you can actually write statically typed HTML in Kotlin if you want. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I don't really know what you mean, but I can try. Uh, I don't use I don't use outlines, but uh, let's say you take this thing. Outline is in Kotlin looks like this, and and in Kotlin it's just uh, two uh, two properties and a method. You can call it from Java, just gets uh, a little bit more interesting. Let's say I, I'll write it in here. Here we've got a name. You've got an age. I mean, there are a jet string and the jet int, and you pass standard Java, standard Java types there. Uh, uh, that's that's uh, intentional. And you know, you've got from, from Java, you've got this. Basically, it get, gener generates the getters. Well, there are no setters in this case. Generates the getters, hash code to string. Well, it's, it's uh, fairly intuitive how, from how, it, how it looks like from Java. No, you don't. From Java, you don't. From Kotlin, yes, you do, obviously. OK, so we're out of time, uh, apparently. So, so thank you very much. Oh, I